Uh, as a follow-up from one several weeks ago uh, related to modern art, uh, Gabriel brought more questions to us. He was really definitely st trying to stir it up. And uh, I don't mind, actually. Um, what I said at that time was I wrote an article about it. I have to tell you, I wasn't much of a writer at the time. <laughs> I'm probably still not much of a writer. I hope my book uh, is better than my writing way back 35 years ago. But um, nevertheless, I, um, I wrote a book called Art and Revolution. Uh, not a book. I wrote a, a, a magazine article published I, somewhere on 1985, somewhere, somewhere in there. And uh, in that article, I, I, I had I'd done the research. I was looking into the history as having been requested to look into the history of modern art. And uh, I had already observed some things, made some comments to an editor who said, why don't you follow up? And I began to dig it up. What I knew about, about some of the things, some of, the, some of these guys was Picasso, for example, had said that his... Uh, um, uh, that he considered uh, his art a weapon, he said, for, for defense and attack against my enemy. And uh, which is, if it's not uh, rather on the edge of psychotic, <laughs> paranoic, it certainly is interesting. But then his connection with the Communist Party and all that is also very interesting. And it really all bears looking into. I'm not going to sit here as a definitive uh, carrier of that information on this, in this little bit of time. But the other part, which I'll talk about too, uh, and I'll, I'll, let me read the question. The other part is about the uh, spiritual side. I think he's, uh, I think I have it in the right order. Um, yeah, so he says, I, and, I, and this I found as well, so that was also true. So I said, I know what follows is neither purely about art nor is it a single question. Some abstract art seems to have its origins in the occult. The thinking of Mondrian, Kandinsky, and of I think he means Klimt, but certainly Clay, Clay would be one of those guys, K-L-E-E, -E, and would therefore be at odds with seeking the beauty of God's creation. So if there's any aesthetic beauty in it, where could it possibly come from? I don't think the aim can, all, can at all be beauty. Is that why seeking beauty will be ridiculed in those circles? Well, there's far too many generalizations in there uh, to suit my uh, way of thinking about things, but uh, some of it's true. And so one of, among many things, I found this dramatic connection to the theosophists who were, you know, they were classically of the occult. They were trying to find ways of connecting with the, with the spirits, the spirit world to, to gain power in this world. And, uh, and that was real. And they did things like automatic writing and things like that. You can find that information. There's a book on the spiritual and art. I think it's called the spiritual, when I, oh golly. Anyway, yeah, a big, big show in Los Angeles back in the 80s contained, uh, I mean, produced a catalog. And they took just about everybody you've ever heard of in modern art was connected with things like theosophy and other occultic uh, thinking. Non-Christian, I mean, in the sense of, I mean, they called Kan Kandinsky a Christian, but you find his connections to Annie Besant and all these other kinds of people who were, were, were strictly into the search for, for spiritual power, uh, not a Christian concept, even a little bit. Uh, so uh, uh, that's, that's, that actually merits thinking. Now, the question about beauty is, so is really more related to what were their aims. You aim at beauty, you get beauty, right? And uh, it was, you know, that, that really is part of the great tradition, is this, this quest for beauty, and it's sort of summed up by Ang and his whole beauty and truth. Thing, which you see in other poets, British poets, for example. I want to say it was Keats um, who mentions it. So uh, uh, what were they after? You know, there's various kinds of things. Uh, and, but, but if you're Paul Klee, he says his doing automatic painting, your brushes, he says, my, my hand is under the powers of some, uh, some, some demon powers. I was under the control of some demon powers. And he says some of them are pretty somber. <laughs> but knowing that, you really have to know what, the, what the, the, the intentions of those powers were. So, you know, and especially the somber ones, what does that mean, you know? So, and, you know, but it's, it's that kind of thing that's just completely outside anything you, that we know from the Renaissance forward uh, that ha having to do with the arts. Uh, it does seem to be more connected to maybe what goes on with the Africans and the African masks. You know, I talk about in the article about what... Um, about the fact that uh, Jackson Pollock uh, 
uh, who, apart from joining the Communist Party at some point in his life, uh, was was doing was apparently, and I'm I, I've read that his that there's some conversation from him about searching for healing through what he was doing with with dribbling paint. Uh, so it was rather like sand art in uh, maybe Navajo, but out in the West. Uh, so. I thought that was, uh, I mean, I, th I do think one ought to look into it. I mean, uh, Kandinsky wrote a book on the spiritual in art, and, uh, and everything he's doing suggests something very other than talking about spiritual things with, uh, with the lines of communication that are open to a person who's, for example, talking about, uh, well, Rembrandt, say, and he's talking, when he's painting a painting about the, um, the um, uh, Christ revealing himself by breaking the bread at Emmaus, you know, and there's this, or you know, or, or the entombment. Uh, these things have what you'd call spiritual sides. Uh, you, others could argue, of course, that they're just narrative, that they're telling a particular story. Uh, but the, the content of those kinds of things is closer to what we would have thought of as um, spiritual only because, I suppose, because it was religious art. Um, so what, they're, what you're talking about now with these guys w became something else, and it was quite a commonplace thing. So look it up for yourself. Uh, dig into it. Uh, I, I, <laughs> do what you want. But um, I don't really want to spend tons of time talking about that. I mean, I'm really here primarily to talk about painting as we do it in the, in this, and put a, bring a really positive light to, um, to our great reasons for doing it the way it's always been done. And I don't mean every little thing the way it's always been done. Um, I, I do believe in actually making progress and evolving the uh, form. Um, but uh, the second part of that question, though, was, and I'm going to, this is really quite interesting, because I found this information more recently, and I didn't use it in the article. But uh, he says, furthermore, and hopefully not going too far, I wonder if there's really a strong link between secularism, that's leftist politics, and the occult in modern slash postmodern art not to stir trouble, to be able to speak about it in a truthful and balanced way, and to be able to uncover its real purpose. It would be no surprise if some prominent critics, academics, and gallerists are also in the occult even today. Now that's going back to the first question, so I'm not gonna address that. I wouldn't have a clue that that would be true. Um, uh, and then he speculates about the, how they shroud work, modern art, in layers of confusing philosophy. Um, I don't dispute that that obviously that is happening. It's very difficult to understand what people have said over the, over the periods of time about uh, modern abstract expressionism, for example. Some of the stuff, um, you know, of the ilk of which I was commending a little bit last week. But so what you will find, though, is, uh, is and I'm gonna just refer now to the Ashcan School, but the Ashcanners, Sloan and those guys, were part of the radical left. They were the anarchists at that time in America. And I say radical left advisedly. I'm not talking about just average people in America being, being uh, oriented more toward the Democrat side or anything. That's not even the case. You know what, the classic liberal, none of that stuff. But, but we're talking about a pretty radical left. And um, what was interesting, though, is, is that the Ashcan um, uh, school who brought the... Um, and these were the guys, their, their subject matter was... Um, you know, the streets, and, and they're trying to show the tragedy of the misery and stuff like that. That was at least the conversation, and it was some of it. And some of it was, you know, in the class of what they called realism at the time, uh, meaning just stop painting pretty girls and tell it the way it really is, you know, and meaning if it's sorted, it's real, and <laughs> uh, et cetera. But um, so uh, let's see if I can remember where I was going with that. So what I found was that the Ashcan School, which brought us the... Uh, the modernist stuff out of Europe for the first time, the Kandinsky's and all those things, uh, and 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 really began the you know created the beginnings of this uh, um, wave that even submerged their representational kind of painting, according to some sources, you know the domination of abstraction and uh, everything but uh, representational, and. Uh, but what happened was, it turns out that I was, as I was reading this, I was noticing the connection of Mabel Dodge, Mabel Dodge, Evans, Mabel Dodge, Lou Han, I forget, she, had, she was married several times, but, but Mabel Dodge was one of these uh, moneyed people, like the Guggenheims and the Rockefellers, and I talk about all these guys in, their, in the article and their connection. 
with creating modernism and, and supporting it and, 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 and building it and um, making a big thing out of it. Uh, even the CIA being involved, by the way, there's such amazing information out there. And I do refer to some of that in the, uh, in the video online from the Atlas Summit. But uh, what, um, what I found is that this is a this is and this is a statement I just found in Wikipedia, okay? And so it's not this isn't any Wikipedia is any kind of conservative source for any or you know or any right wing source for anything. So what they said in there is that so she created a, a made herself a patron of the arts, um, and uh, often had and so she created something in her apartment, which would have been probably a pretty elaborate place, like a gallery she created, and then she had people over, and common luminaries, often in attendance, it says, were people like. Carl van Vechten, Margaret Sanger. Now, Margaret Sanger, of course, is the racist, uh, uh, you know, with, with the idea of eugenics. I mean, dark stuff. Emma Goldman, an out-and-out -out anarchist slash communist. Uh, Charles Dumuth, Big Bill Haywood. I mean, these guys are all major names in the radical left, you know. And uh, so Max Eastman, Lincoln Stevens, uh, Walter Lippmann. And then John Reed, John Reed actually died in Russia. He was over there in support, I think it was 1920 or so. He'd been in there in support of the Russian Revolution. So, you know, so you're talking about this is the body of souls who were involved in the, the support of modernism as it came from Europe. So, you know, make it that what you will, but I prefer to leave it at that. And again, I don't really want to get further and further into this um, as, a, as a general subject here. I'll, I may discuss some point, some small point at some point, but I'll usually, I think I'll do it as an, in a, sort of an ancillary way. I'd much sure prefer to talk about my favorite things, which is the beauty and the truth and the craft of painting, you know? So, uh, but thank you anyway. I think it's, uh, I, I would encourage you to look into it because things have been upset. I mean, the, the, the radical left in relation to the United States is involved in revolution. I mean, uh, and uh, I think, I'm telling you, the ICA, I think, uh, the Institute for Contemporary Art, which was uh, founded in, in, in London, I want to say again, by a very radical leftist, was, uh, its, its motto was perpetual revolution in the arts. And I mean, like, the arts are supposed to be a stabilizing force. Historically, it's been a stabilizing force in a culture. And of course, when you're trying to destabilize a culture, huh, wouldn't that make a lot of sense? And the arts are often one of those early places where you go in, 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 uh, in England, the, the art colleges are all classical hotbeds of, 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 of twisted stuff, revolution. I mean, they use, they use the, they, it's in their own words. They'll, they're, they're describing themselves as out there on the cutting edge, doing the weirder and weirder things and all that sort of stuff. And you've come to the place today, of course, where, where most of what is going on uh, in art colleges has, is, is Politics. It, what it appears it, from this point of view, I know they had entire shows at the Mass College of Art dedicated to, to supporting, to providing funding for or, or other kinds of moral support for the communists in Nicaragua. Uh, and that was back uh, in probably the late 80s or so, maybe, maybe in the early 90s, when I was uh, there in, in the Boston area. So, you know, we're talking about something as real as very deeply connected to the modernism, but much more to the to the, to the modernist schools that uh, have, have just simply do, now dominate what used, to be, what used to be the teaching of the craft and the grammar of, of painting and making people uh, good at the great traditional uh, uh, basics. So um, yeah, there's so much more to this. I mean, it's just meaty as heck. And you're, you're on a track that's real, uh, but it's not, you know, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not our job to go into this thing with that, our job is to build. Our job as in the arts is actually to look for what is good, what's beautiful, what's true, and, uh, and build from there. So, uh, you know, and, and the left, you know, it's got a, that radical thing has got a destructive tendency. And you'll see that in all the manifestos, you'll see that in all the writings that they ever do. They, you know, it's like they, they hate their, 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 their ancestor, their, their great arts. They say good things about one or two of them and basically trash it all as if it, it's, you know, never look back. And uh, it's just fascinating stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I could go on and on and uh, I'm rambling, so I don't want to go on and on. I just would rather leave this off and maybe never do this again. <laughs> okay. But anyway, thank you for the question and uh, do look it up. If you want me to actually send you a copy of the article, I'll be glad to. Uh, I've been trying to, as I think I said last time, I've been trying to get it 
in an electronic form where I can just um, send it out. I mean to rewrite it actually and, uh, and clean up my act as a writer and make it more palatable in some ways. But the amount of data in it, the amount of real data in it is pretty, is pretty impressive, the sources and stuff. So anyway, but thank you very much, Gabriel. And um, please share, please uh, uh, comment, uh, subscribe, and uh, something else, <laughs> which I could never remember. Why is it four? Three is a better number. Oh, the like, hit the like button. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, folks.